was going to ask you, Dave, because, I mean, Lee Catamull, he, he, he had natural drive in him, didn't he? He wanted it, he, you know. But people are different. And ha- did you, is the one thing that you always realise that you've got to treat different? That that guy won't react to the same um, bollocking that, as, yeah, as, as this guy will. They're all different. They all had a different journey. They all, they all excelled in different ways. Um, uh, I'll go through them all in different, different quirky things. But people like Jason Kennedy was just as competitive as Lee. And like some of the, and like I said, the tussles in training and I asked you down and about uh, training three times a day on Wednesdays. And we used to joke and I used to give three or four of them a lift home afterwards on a Wednesday evening. So they trained in the morning, trained in the afternoon and then we had an evening session so we could train with the under 16s. And they used to, we used to have some real good fun. And have you got it? Have you got the helpline number, Dave? The child, child helpline number? Because they, you know, they, I'm going to dig at me then. They're doing too much with them. But some of the, some of the, some of the sessions were just terrific. I mean, Stuart Downing is the obvious name that stands out. And Tony McMahon, when he was on a few weeks ago, paid tribute to Stuart Downing. He says, you know, he was saying people talk about the superstars that Middlesbrough signed at that time. But Stuart Downing is our very own superstar. Mm. Um, and no one can take that away from him. You know, the guy went on to win 35 caps for England, play at the highest level. But who, who after, other than Stuart, would you... I know it's hard to pick out, but who, which one's the... I guess you think in uh, you think we, we turned to David Wheat. It was outstanding, wasn't he, for Middlesbrough? For, and I, 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 I think there's, there's many of them. You know, maybe... Um, I think Matthew Bates could have been as good as what we produced. Matthew was quick, intelligent, uh, always got a point to make with you, always questioned, why am I doing that? Uh, very inquisitive, but bright, intelligent, aggressive, um, hard to hand, not, not um, what's the word? Um, a challenge. He was a challenge on the management scene, uh, as, as a number of them were. Um, but that's part of it. As I said, they're all from different social backgrounds and different families. So those, and again, they they all they all added to the cake mix, as Proc used to say. Proc used to the say one that I often cake. think about, Dave, is because um, you you know we talked about earlier that of of ninety odd players that played first team football, fifty of them played for a first team elsewhere. But Chris Brunt never got a game at Middlesbrough, but has had what a career. He played finally. Playing his last game for West Bromwich Albion, helping them win promotion back to the Premier League. Um, I, I think you've, you've mentioned someone there who never never came through to play in the first team, but he was he was probably the one of the first ones through my through the door at my retirement do and drove all the way from played the game in the afternoon on the evening, drove up to Rockcliffe, said hello. I said hello to everyone else and drove back just to say thanks for what we for what wow. we did. Not me, but he wanted to see everyone. And um, great credit, great credit to the game. Uh, fantastic left foot. Um, we actually, as an academy staff, when we did player audits, and uh, we actually recommended that Chris stay for another two years. Um, but he was moving away out of academy football and the. The senior staff at the time didn't think that that was the case, so he didn't get that two-year contract. He was unlucky as well, and I guess Middlesbrough's loss was West Brom's gain, obviously. But I mean, he was up against Stuart Downing, who was a bit older than him, and Adam Johnson, who was maybe yeah. a year or two younger than him. And probably we thought we were all right for left wingers at the minute. Mm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You mentioned Adam there, who unfortunately made some bad choices in his life later on, but um, a wonderful, wonderful talent. Wonderful time, yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask you, I mean, looking at, I was looking at the list earlier and I was thinking, right, so we brought through goalkeepers. We've had Brad Jones, Ross Turnbull, Steele now. We've got Ainsley Pears, of course, in. We've had full-backs in McMahon and Taylor and Joe Bennett and centre-backs like Weeder Bates, Gibson, Andrew Davey, midfielders, Morrison, Catamull, wingers, Downing, Brunt, Johnson, strikers. So it was a bit short on those. They're really yeah, making yeah, it. Yeah. Well, Danny, well, course, Danny, Danny, Danny Graham, of course, did, did very Graham well. We kind of found him, didn't we? We brought him, yeah. him from, uh, as it was it an 18-year-old? Um, he was playing at Gateshead College. 
Yeah. I mean, is it just a quirk that we haven't managed to bring through uh, the strike? No, I, think, I think it's the most, probably the most difficult position to, um, to develop, if that's the right word. Uh, Tommy Craddock, Tommy Craddock spent all of his life from nines to sixteens as a centre back, left back, um, and it was Proc who said, "Well, I think we should take him out of the firing line at the back and play him centre forward." And he did. His first game, he broke his collarbone, so his, his dad and his mum weren't too pleased with us because that's the first injury he had. <laughs> but we stuck with it, and thankfully, Tom Tom scored a hell of a number of goals at academy level, but never quite made made that step. He played in that game at Fulham. Mm-hmm. We had a good career, really good career. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, strikers are hard to hard to develop. And, um, I mean, do you ever think back and think about the some of those that didn't make it? You know, that you know, wonder what might have been because some of the I was thinking about this earlier, and I often think back to sometimes players got the headlines maybe too soon before they'd made the first team. And I remember Nathan Porritt was a name that he, I remember him getting um, linked with Chelsea and Liverpool and. We had, uh, I think it was a lad called Bruno Palatos that was uh, played for England at all levels and it looked like he might be a, a player. And Cameron Park was another one. I remember uh, lots of people. Harrison, Ch- Har- Harris, Harrison Chapman, who moved on. Harry Chapman, of course, now. With Tony last Morgan. Night, he... And Jordan Jones, another one. that he's, he's come back though, Jordan, hasn't he? It's great to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, I mean, Harry's got the potential to come back. That wonderful talent. Yeah, all those... Those guys in there, um, Nathan Porritt, great talent. I think, um, I think the the story behind it all was was upsetting, really. Panorama. Uh, I don't know if you remember, Dave, but that yeah, was a sad didn't story help for me. No, no, I don't, I don't think it did. And I think if you spoke to Nathan now, who been in touch with me since, I think he's kit man at Hartlepool, um, or he was, or he was the last time I spoke. So he's still in love with the game. Cameron was a lovely technical player, probably that edge that I talked about probably wasn't there as, as much as the others, um, but a wonderful technical technical player. Um, yeah, so and Jordan Jones, I've had you know, some lovely conversations with Jordan's dad um, and lovely articles written in the Glasgow News about selling his car when he went up to Glasgow and so he couldn't get back to Teesside. So yeah, because because I think you always said I, one thing you are whenever I spoke to you when we were at the Borough, Dave, is that you always said that it's not just about talent. It's that I think you had a triangle of three things that had to be in place to make you a complete football. Yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was the four corner thing, Dave. It was four the, corners. The, the technical corner, the physical corner, the psychological corner, and the social corner, and. You know, Jordan's a great example, and he doesn't mind me talking about it. And he's well documented that the temptations that he found has been a. And I look back and blame ourselves a little bit. He got lots and lots of pats off the, on the back when he was a nine, ten, eleven year old uh, superstar at nine and ten, eleven, and then started to. I think all that affected him, and um, but he's. He, he speaks to me now and he, he speaks very fondly of everything he went through. I could, I could tell you some real stories, but I won't. But um, they were, they were, again, that, that, that challenge they present you. Um, and there was lots, lots and lots and lots of challenges. You mentioned Andrew Davies before, before we started. And Andrew was a, Andrew was a, a challenge from a managerial point of view all the way through, but in a nice way. Um, real, real talent, Dara. Real talent, um, but needed managing, needed needed guidance and help and support. Uh, and and he, he appreciates what what the academy did and how we stuck by him. And, and again, he eventually made his, his way in the first team and made a really, really good career for himself. Yeah. What about? Um, I mean, you 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 talked about working with Brian Robson, and Steve McLaren, and then after that, you'd have worked alongside. Gareth Southgate, who now the England manager, of course. So, what, yeah. what, what, I mean, Gareth was making his, uh, you know, a start. He was thrown in at the deep end, wasn't he? From you'd have known him from being that inspirational captain. Yeah. But 
He was, um, and then suddenly um, in at the deep end as, as manager, I, I guess he'd have looked to you for a bit of guidance too at that point. He, he was great, Gareth, and you know, I keep in touch with him and was in touch all the way through the World Cup, etc. And um, he he knew himself that that time was a, a difficult time for him. But being the man he is, he, he went to the Football Association, didn't like what he was doing in, in terms of his experience. When he started on his manager, we put him through through the academy. We he, he completed his level two, level three, level four coaching awards. So he used our academy players to coach. Um, so he became qualified to do the job. Um, and then his first venture at the FA wasn't as he saw it. So being Gareth, he came away from it, reinvented himself, went around Europe, saw best practice. Um, Looked at what he would, what he wanted, and he went back to the FA. If you remember, as under twenty-one manager, and through that, he met Steve Holland. Um, and Steve, Steve and myself go back years and years. He did his air license the same time as me, and he was a crew Alexander uh, as academy manager, and he ended up working alongside Gareth, and just a just a fantastic man, a fantastic football man, a gentleman, um, but. People forget Gareth had a, that edge. I'm talking. Gareth was as edgy as anyone. When the, when you watched the first team train under the leadership of Gareth Southgate, it was a it was a pleasure. There was never any slacking. Tuesday, Thursday afternoons, Gareth, Hugo, our steward, Frank Quedru, always down on the pitch with only four first teamers left in the building. Steve Harrison with them. Three academy lads, two wingers crossing in from either side, centre forward playing against them from the academy. Every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon, attention to detail over and over and over again. Great example. He would do anything to get better, Gareth. Anything. He'd listen to anyone. And, and obviously, Gareth um, came to an end at, at Middlesbrough. And then along came Gordon and Gordon Strachan. Brilliant to watch on the training field. In my opinion, as a coach, from a coach education point of view, Gordon was great. And support. Um, very, very good in, in terms of supporting what the academy staff have decided with young players' pathways, had his own choices. Uh, football development was about him. And what I mean by that is that his experiences as a young boy, he thought that that's how everyone should have a real tough, tough upbringing and hard. And, and in the modern world, that's not always possible, but a great coach, fantastic coach. Um, you know, I, I guess I he, think... he's another one that Gordon is a, one of those who just wanted it naturally, and there's nothing laid back about Gordon, was there? So it, you know, and he, yeah. he, he possibly he got he'd maybe get frustrated with people who were a bit too laid back and didn't didn't yeah, want it as much as he did. I think I, I'm not sure what he might be saying, but I think he'd hold his hands up. And probably say that from a recruitment point of point of view, they didn't quite get it right. Yeah. And at the time, I think I couldn't swear to this, but from a financial point of view, Dave, I think that's when things went a little bit awry. Got awry. Yeah. Yeah, and the big investments, and it didn't work. Yeah. So the money money was spent, and not not the success. We didn't. We didn't go forward. We went backwards, and then poor so, Tony Mowbray. Uh, so behind that, Tony came in. And Tony's just just the best football man I've ever met. He's just one hundred percent agree with that. And uh, he's just a top top bloke. And he used to come into my office and just sit and talk for hours. Um, I remember when we had the audit process for the Premier League, and part of the, part of the process was to interview the manager to see what the links were. And his quote was, I think it's a really, really good marriage between the first team and the academy. And then they asked him a question about philosophy or whatever. And one hour later, Tony was still talking and they were still listening. Um, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, man. We, we often joke, Dave. We have had Tony Mowbray on here and we do joke that um, he, he has the, the longest answers to any question. You don't need many, too many questions when you... You're preparing your interview, he's great, honestly, he's fantastic. but whatever he says, it's going to be fascinating. And that, that um, that's because he's a brilliant. football man, he, he loves the game, he lives for the game. 
Um, and then along came Ito. And um, Ito was different. It was culture. It was um, working at the highest level with the best manager in the world at one point. Or, and and his, his own career was fantastic. What he brought, I thought, to us um, was attention to detail in preparation. Um, the, our first in-service training for all the academy staff was in the dining room upstairs at Rockcliffe. And I sat on a table and interviewed Ito. Uh, and he had uh, Carlos with him and um, Leo. And I just, we just conducted a one-to-one -one interview and it was fascinating. And that was, that was in the first two weeks of being in the building. And then we, we watched how he worked and uh, it was carousel coaching, moving from one station to another station to another station, but everything was linked. And the preparation and the detail that they went into for each game was phenomenal. Demanded everything from his staff, everything. Um, and um, the success that was the promotion, and that was that was really really nice. And um, I always saw my job as having a good relationship with the senior staff. So going through all of that, and then obviously it came to a, uh, a sad end really um, with with Ito, and um, and then in, in steps Steve Agnew, and Steve Agnew had started the academy as under twelve coach. At Tollsby Road. You know? Yeah, that was a great rise. And that was basically a guy who just was a great coach, wasn't it? Going, Brilliant. you know, doing Brilliant. what he does, what he likes yeah, doing. Yeah. And if you look at Newcastle, I'm so, so pleased about how things have turned out for him. And he's obviously known Steve Bruce a long, long time now. But Agus is a real student of the game. And um, he did lots and lots and lots for the academy when he was second team, reserve team manager. And some of the stuff he he brought to was, was was first class, absolute first class. What's the um, hardest thing about modern day football and bringing young players through, Dave? Because I guess, I mean, for one, the, the money has got to be a, a challenge where where players get offered massive contracts when they're 17, 18 year old and can suddenly so, drive in in um, the Porsche and you're trying to keep their feet on the ground. Yeah, some do, Dave. I mean, we were never in that. We were never in that in that league as it were and we didn't want to be we wanted to um have a peer structure and i had steve gibson myself and keith and neil and the academy staff and made many many long discussions about where we should take it and i was i was always stick to what we're doing stick to what we're doing on occasion steve steve would step outside of that because he was the owner of the club and he did he did what he thought was best for the club at all and as he always has them um but um, no, the, I think the, the, the level of player, the, the technical level of the player within England at the moment is the highest it's ever been. I think the advancements we've made in technology, um, sports science, medicine, the shape of the football. If you go on the Premier League years on Sky Television and you watch the early years, just watch the shape of the athlete compared to the Rashfords and the... Uh, the new wave of wave of player, the Madisons, etc. It's a different shape of athlete, and they're so well tuned. And um, the other thing, I've I, I do a bit of mentoring with about five or six coaches, and um, I've advised them all to, to work so so closely with the medical and not so much the medical, but the sports science department and the physical department, because the the physical demands of the modern game are so so great. They, they're Olympic athletes. They are so, so quick. The ball moves quicker. The, 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 the athlete is, is much quicker and, and much, much better conditioned. And they have to be. And uh, that's the way the game's gone. Um, so, so to, develop, to develop the, the player that we set out to develop from Teesside and surrounding areas is very, very difficult and becomes more, more good. So Craig and his staff, I think... It, have got it tougher. Got it yeah, this is your tougher. successor, Craig Little, but he, he is bringing through, and I, and I know that you know he won't be the or again the only guy that's bringing through. But the academy is still producing players. It's great to see, you know, despite the struggles yeah. of this season, Dale Fry, Tavernier, Coulson, 
Nathan Wood on the brink, you know, still only a young lad. And- oh, great lads. And, you know, Dale Dale was the first one in, last one away. He was, he was always there first with his dad. Left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. Uh, Marcus Tavernier is a great story. And uh, I just and you talk about edge. And uh, the, the other thing is that enthusiasm, the love of the game. Stewie Downing never missed training, never missed a game. He was lucky with injury, never missed, never missed uh, through injury. But he just loves the game of football. Watch Marcus Tavernia play. He just loves every minute. He's on the training ground. He loves every minute. He's on, he makes millions of mistakes, but it doesn't affect him. It was like cats, cats could have a nightmare. wouldn't affect him. Give me the ball again. Um, just has a, this great love of the game. So that toughness and that love of the game are two things. Uh, and, and Marcus just oozes that. Hayden's, Hayden's, Hayden's a really... By the way, Marcus got released at 14 by Newcastle. And it was Ron Bourne who said, when Martin Carter, they both said, yeah, well, that, we, we should have a go with him. He's got something. And we did. We stuck with him. And so well well, well done, Ron a long for, uh, spotting that talent. He could have been lost to football. Or, or worse still, he could have, he could have gone to another uh, club beat and be coming through there. Yeah. The, um, Inzy, Inzy Pears, Inzy Pears yeah. Stevenson, uh, Hayden Coulson was a good journey. Um, so, and, and Nathan Wood, Nathan Wood, captain of England at the moment. Um, fantastic athlete. You it's know. amazing, Dave. What's amazed me is to see that you know the um, the mo- number of former Borough players and the sons are coming through to yeah, actually yeah, get to it. And I know, noticed on the um, on the website last week that uh, Callum Cavan has just signed. Yeah, 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 which is great for Graham and the family. And Graham's great as well. You know. Yeah, yeah. Dave, but as, as, well as, as, well you. as that, uh, people have asked me about the secrets and yeah, go on. On the on the coaching side, I I was always attracted to Borough Borough people, Borough peer players, Craig Hignett, Curtis Fleming, Stephen Pears, Mark Proctor, Colin Cooper. I, I always thought that, and and then on the other side, Paul Crazier, which the fans won't know, but Paul came through the academy. He had three years as a scholar. I I released him at eight nineteen. He came back, qualified as a teacher. He's now Graham Lee's assistant at under 23s. Phil Shedd went right through the system, got released in third year. Now he's head of coach at the academy. Um, so we take great pride in, 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 the, in the coaching sort of development side of things as well. Is that a little Craig bit as well? Little. Dave, is it a bit of, you know, you've got that people who really care about the club yeah. that can pass that passion on? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and and it's not just that. I mean, Mark Proctor. I mean, a very good friend of mine, Mark. And I, Mark, under the categorisation and the EPPP, would have been hopeless, absolutely useless. He couldn't switch on a computer, Proc. Um, but his personal relationships with players. He'd been in the dressing room of a winning dressing room. He'd been in with the England under twenty three. He'd been in losing dressing rooms. He knew what it was all about. And all those people I've just mentioned have been there and smelt it and felt it. And I think that's invaluable because they get a sense of the, the personality of the player, the, the, what's required in a winning dressing room, what's required in, to pull people back from a losing dressing room. There's a big thing with honesty. Prop was as honest as anyone I've ever met with all the players. I've seen tears, I've seen laughter. His favourite song was The Good Life. Tony Bennett's The Good Life. He used to walk into the dining room, singing the top of his voice. Oh, The Good Life. Because he said, you'll never get a better life than this, lads. And they absolutely loved Proc. And every, every player that comes under Proc's mentorship or guidance, they all love him because he's honest. He's a top man. Uh, he did wonders for me as an individual. Um, when I first started. And, and the lads have been on here and praised him to, to high heaven as well, as they have praised you, Dave. And I think the, uh, you know, massive credit to, to, you, to you both, but especially you to, to do 20 years as the, the Borough Academy director as a, an unsung hero of the Borough. <laughs> uh, and and that, that's, you know, you, you're laughing, but everybody that's watching who's a Borough fan knows that's absolutely true yeah. and what you did for the football yeah. club and will 
I'm sure we'll always be thankful for that. Yeah. So, I just told that Steve, um, Steve has a time to reflect and enough time to think it through with everyone at the senior level and um, as he always does, it, whatever step he makes will be for the benefit of the football club. It will not be a selfish kick. It will be because we feel, it will not be him, it will be we feel this is the right thing for the club. It's been a tough, tough season. And I really, really felt for, for Jonathan, a good friend of mine, uh, worked tirelessly, um, but things just didn't work out. But he'll come back stronger. He'll, 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 he'll go on with things. But I just thought for the club... Good, I'm going to say it's a big summer, but um, it's not going to be a big summer because we, we, it's only going to be a very short, close season in truth. But it's mm. going to be a big one, whatever, Dave. And Dave, listen, we could talk to you all night because I could give. I've got another ten questions here, but we're. Uh, but Dave, thank you very much yeah, for joining no problem, us yeah. on Borough Backtrack. Yeah. Up um, the borough. <laughs> absolutely up the borough to everybody. Thanks yeah. again to Dave for joining us this week. Yeah. Uh, we'll Thanks, be back Dave. again um, with. Um, more Borough Legends next week. Um, we look forward to seeing you then. Join us on Borough Backtrack. We'll be playing it live on Facebook. We'll see you then. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Neil. Cheers.